Hello and welcome to Startup Hack. Today we are going to discuss about .NET words about using memory cache. Caching is one of the famous ways to improve a performance of an application and to decrease a load on a data provider. In .NET, there are packages Microsoft.Extensions.Caching to use different storage, Redis, SQL Server, Cosmos Memory. So it, you can use it by installing microsoft.extensions.caching.memory from and you get package. So let's get started. So today's agenda is number one using memory cache, number two tracking entities, number three issue updating value in memory cache. So let's dig in. Do you want to earn $100,000 a year? Do you want to become a software developer within just 3 months? With our amazing course and awesome tutors, you never have to worry about getting stuck. We help students to learn skills that companies want to hire. We are Startup Hack. Don't forget to subscribe our channel. So let's get started. Alright, let's move towards the first topic using memory cache. To keep data, it uses inner concurrent dictionary. So operation set or get a thread safe. An interaction with memory cache is described in iMemory cache. This interface has several methods to set, remove and get a value. The usual algorithm to work with a cache is try to get a value from the cache. If you didn't get the value from the cache, request to a data source and save receive value in the cache. Here's a simple example. We should be careful in using memory and prevent from uncontrolled allocation. Therefore, in the, up, in the code, we limit the cache size lifetime of entities by memory cache entry operations. So moving towards the next topic, tracking entities. The one important part of caching is an update of data in cache store. In the code, we check existing of entity during receiving a value. If it doesn't exist, we get value from data provider and then save it in the cache. Also for this purpose, iMemory cache extension has method get or create t item object key comma function uh, i cache entry comma i item factory. I should mention work expiration mechanism in memory cache. When we try to get a value from a cache, the last one receives a value from an inner dictionary and check if it expires. If yes, the entity is marked as expired and then remove. If no, then the cache just returns the value. In both cases, the cache starts an invalidation process for all values in the inner dictionary in a separate thread. The period of this checking you can set up in expiration scan frequency field of memory cache option. By default, one minute. Also, memory cache has complicating logic. It removes entities in the following order. All expired items, item by priority, lowest priority items are removed first, least recently used objects, items within, with the earliest absolute expiration, items with their earliest sliding expiration, pin items with priority never remove or never remove. Due to these reasons, we have to track values in a cache and update it. The simplest way is checking value by try get value method during receiving it from a cache. Okay, the last topic is issue updating value in memory cache. We can see in this code it is possible to call get or update from multiple threads and a cache value will be updated multiple times in these threads. Raise condition. There are different ways to avoid it. Number one is using synchronization primitives. For example, you can use semaphore slim. Also, we can use interlock methods like here. There is a lock per key approach. Anyway, this get or update logic breaks a single responsibility principle. You get value and sometimes set new value 
in a single method. So number two is using callbacks. Official documentation mentioned eviction callbacks. Let's see what it is. Each entity in memory cache has callbacks, collection of positive eviction callback registration type that are invoked after eviction value from the cache in the separate thread. You can add your delegate by registering register post eviction callback method in memory cache entry options. Argument of set method. Here's the example. Eviction region set in eviction reason dot remove after removing an eviction reason dot expire after checking lifetime when cache entity was updated eviction reason will be eviction reason dot replace in case reviewing due to capacity overflow it is eviction reason capacity a simple example is here. It allows starting background update evicted values and split get or set logic single responsibility principle. But you need to remember about race condition cache entity allows tracking changes by using I change token. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned the memory cache and how to implement it. So don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for latest updates. For joining our course. Simply go to our website called startuphack.com slash start dash now. Thank you.